Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. Let's talk basic needs. Let's talk trust fund. What comes to mind when you think of basic needs? And of course, when you hear trust fund, immediately money should come to mind, right? Today we'll find out a little bit more about our basic needs trust fund and we have with us today Mr. Brandon Antoine, the Deputy Project Manager from the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Eugene. When we hear the word basic, we often attribute it to bottom, barrel, less of. That's not the case at all. When we add now needs and a trust fund to it, what should one be thinking about? Okay, um, the Basic Needs Trust Fund is, a, is, a is the principal poverty reduction program mm -hmm. of the Caribbean Development Bank. Okay. Um, it started since 1979, and the objective of this program is it's geared towards poverty reduction by improving the socioeconomic conditions of, of persons within the nine borrowing member countries that's within the, the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, improving the lives of, of persons. Um, and, and it is done through various sectors. Um, we're looking at the water and sanitation sector, the access and drainage, and also the education and human resource development sector, which includes um, livelihoods and skills training. Mm. So this program has been in existence for quite some time, over 30 or 40 years, yeah. if you will. Um, and it is the flagship program of the St. Lucia Social Development Fund. Um, so when we hear the term basic needs, it, it has nothing to do with you being the bottom of the barrel. It's basically coming in to assist people who are in poverty. Yes. Um, essentially, um, it is a community-driven uh, model mm -hmm. that, that is being used with the BNTF um, program, where the, the sub-projects that we implement are are normally emanate from the communities. The communities decide and they submit proposals to the St. Lucia Social Development Fund and we review, we do our evaluations, our analysis, um, have our various stakeholder meetings mm -hmm. to determine whether <coughs> these sub-projects are feasible and will help to alleviate poverty um, within those communities. Now, when we, think, we speak about alleviating poverty, what exactly does that mean? What are you trying to um, accomplish or what are you trying to, um, what is the ultimate goal in the alleviation of poverty? So basically, it is to improve lives. Okay. Um, we, we normally do baseline assessments mm -hmm. to determine where um, persons are. So for instance, if we implement, if we implement, uh, we, we construct a public um, facility mm -hmm. in a, a community, let's say Marsha, mm -hmm. we have to determine um, the poverty level, whether the, the door needs an appropriate needs assessment, a community needs assessment, to determine the, the needs of, of those persons okay. within the community okay. and, and develop the intervention to address those needs, um, to improve the, the, the sanitary um, situation perhaps in that community. Mm -hmm. So it is, we, de we, we more or less develop a strategic and scientific approach um, to help persons to, 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 to get out of poverty. Um, as you would expect, you cannot um, alleviate poverty in one go, mm -hmm. you know, for, or for yeah. other country yeah, it, it, it's a know, process. by one intervention. So yes. it's, a, it's a process. Um, but over the years, since 1979, and this is the 10th um, BNTF cycle, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and we have implemented projects for the length from and breadth of St. Lucia, um, get, to, uh, get towards poverty alleviation. Um, we've done early childhood centers under the education and human resource development sector. Mm -hmm. we've, done, we've done um, water projects, um, improved health centers, um, and we've done um, quite a number of skills um, training projects mm -hmm. and also livelihood projects where persons um, through various organizations like the National Skills Development Center where persons are trained, um, provided with a skill and they can use that skill 
um, to find work, to find employment, which will in the end help them to improve their lives. So over the years, um, since the inception of uh, the program in 1979, these are some of the benefits um, you could boast to or point to and say, yes, we have done this, we have implemented all of these programs within the communities. Um, everything is community-based, I'm getting the um, feeling that you think community first before moving with any project, is that correct? Yes. Um, we do our community needs assessment. We prioritize, mm -hmm. look at what's, pri what's a priority in a, in a particular community. Um, we do various assessments, our develop our sec sector portfolio of projects, right. um, and do our profiles and so on to determine whether this is the, the, the right project, whether this project would help um, solve the problems that the community faces. How do we go about selecting which community needs intervention? Must um, a proposal be written up and um, brought to the SSDF? Or yes. Um, so we accept, we accept project proposals from various stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, so you will have parliamentary representatives, community leaders, um, church leaders, community organizations, schools, um, the Ministry of Education, which is a, a significant partner for us mm -hmm. um, in the BNTF program. They will submit, um, they normally submit proposals. We have our technical team, our engineers, um, for, for the civil works projects. Um, our technical team would do the evaluation, would look at the, um, the estimates, the, the prepared drawings, mm -hmm. etc. And, and then we determine the feasibility. We do what we call um, prioritization of projects mm -hmm. through a prioritization tool that we have. So this will help, um, help us determine whether the, the project is, is suitable for, um, for, for an intervention. Um, and it will be based on va various socioeconomic indicators mm -hmm. or factors okay. that we take into consideration. So, so poverty levels, et cetera, would be key for us. That would be. The focus areas of the BNTF, of course, you just mentioned that you're in the 10th cycle. Yeah. Um, let's talk about various sub-projects that would be implemented under the cycle. What, we, what are we looking at? So we're looking at, um, like I mentioned earlier, the water and sanitation sector, mm -hmm. access and drainage, and education and human resource development. Under the water and sanitation sector, we are currently, or we've, we've just signed a contract with, the, with WASCO um, to install a 100,000 gallon water tank in the Victoria community, that's in Chuzel. Um And uh, the, this project is particularly important because over the years, the, the residents of the communities, the surrounding communities, um, I believe about 15 communities, mm -hmm. Will, be, will benefit from this project. Um, they are currently receiving water once per week. So we are hoping um, with, the, with this intervention um, that they can, can receive um, portable water, a continuous supply of portable water for at least four or five days a week or perhaps the entire week. Um, but what we are looking at is we, we install the tank. Currently there is a a 40,000 gallon rubble wall water tank which, has, which is leaking, it has some serious deteriorating really badly. Mm -hmm. um, so this 100,000 um, gallon gas, glass fuse tank will replace this tank so that they could do repairs. Um, it, will, it will be alongside the tank. Okay. We will install it alongside so the tank. It will be a complement. Yeah, it will be a complement to the tank. Um, Wasco will repair the existing tank. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, so it's their choice whether they want to use both tanks um, because there is an issue with supply. That's one issue. And there's also an issue with the intake um, for, that, for that water tank. And the current intake is the, Fon is the Fonche Jacques intake. Okay. So Wasco, what Wasco is doing, um, they are looking at the possibilities of having another intake in Zeno. So with that, in, with that new intake, communities that are on the Fonce Jacques intake will be transferred to the Zano okay. intake and the Fonce Jacques intake will only supply the Victoria water tank. Okay. Let's take a quick break. I will come back and chat some more 
about um, the alleviation of poverty, which is, uh, I guess, your mandate mm -hmm. um, with the social, the uh, social development fund, financial social development fund, and of course the BNTF. This is Issues and Answers. I am Kendall Eugene. We will be back right after this. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Kite mou dou bagay chans. Depi mou fet, PS moun pa jame counsel. Mali Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband and we spent over an hour on the cell. Sa se counseling? Mou kwe se zafè moun. Just think about it, Glacia. When you have a difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. When your situation is bien way, ek mwen bwizwen professional counseling. Me mani la jan, ishe a kondisyon doctor's visit. Eh, eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP? which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees. Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit, ASAP, because I want professional, did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works, let it work for you. So I'll go into the other projects. Welcome back. We are here with Mr. Brandon Antoine from the uh, Lucia Social Development Fund. He is the Deputy Project Manager. Of course, we're discussing the uh, Basic Needs Trust Fund, a major part of the SSDS uh, mandate to assist and alleviate poverty within the island. And we were speaking about um, a water project that is ongoing. Um, looking to, of course, bring some form of relief to communities. And you were mentioning what community? That's in Victoria Chosel. In Chosel. Uh, yeah. Lovely, lovely communities you have not been. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so how long um, would a project like that, would it take to impact the community? Because um, you mentioned you have some, it, that you would have issues. Yeah. With, um, so how long yeah. would it take before? Yeah. Um, so we are looking at, the completion, of, the completion of this project to be within three to four months, mm -hmm. um, providing that the we deal with the intake issues, um, do the installation of the water tank. Mm -hmm. um, we should see, based on the the forecast of Wasco, we should see some immediate relief for persons within that community. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's a it's a it's, it's a quite it's this project is very. Um, Opportune and it, it's 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 needed at this time mm -hmm. um, for the to improve the lives of residents because like you, you like you said earlier, water is life mm -hmm. and we we in 2023 I believe you know we should work as assiduously as we can to to try to to provide water for for communities um, across Saint Lucia, but the the BNTF program we have implemented a number of water projects. Well, let's talk um, a little bit about that. Yeah. Like you said, it is life, and you know how we would um, be on Rascal's phone line if our water intake was cut off for only two minutes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the, the projects implemented, especially the water projects. Yes, so we are on the, currently we are implementing the BNTF 10 cycles. Mm -hmm. um, cycle. So we've had nine cycles before that. Um, we've done... We've installed a 100,000 gallon water tank at Bouton, um, which is now um, improving the lives of, of, of pers persons are now um, within that community are receiving water on a continuous basis as we speak. Um, we've done installation of water tanks in, in Passias, um, in Viesique, mm -hmm. um, uh, La Quamingo. I could go on and on, um, but you know, over the years we have um, in Labon as well, we did uh, we installed um, some water mains um, in Labon under the BNTF um, nine program. Yes. Yeah, so throughout the various cycles of the BNTF program, we have um, been able to um, 
in, uh, implement water projects to improve the lives of persons. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and moving on to the access and drainage sector, mm -hmm. under the BNTF cycle, we are we will be constructing a road in Goodlands, mm -hmm. road and drain, and also we we will be um, installing a four-inch main and doing some household connections. Um, in the same community, the same community mm -hmm. under, the, under this project in collaboration with, with Wasco. We'll also be constructing a road in, in Crown Lands, that's in Bexon. So this is another project under the access um, and drainage sector. Under the education and human resource development sector, mm -hmm. which I said it includes um, livelihoods, yes. um, we, are, uh, we have a number of projects um, to be implemented under this sector. So we're rehabilitating the Food and Nutrition Lab at the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School. Um, we're also rehabilitating a block of the Sufra Primary School. Um, and the, we are also rehabilitating or retrofitting um, a pre-K class in the Babono Primary School, the La Mingo, and also the Bishop Gashi Primary School. Um, and not too far from the Bishop Gashi Primary School, we are rehabilitating the Antripo Early Childhood Development Center, which is cl in close in, proximity. In, in, in Gashi, yes, uh, it's in Marsha. Yes. Um, and on the, the, the livelihoods um, sector mm -hmm. or, or livelihoods um, portfolio, we, are, we, are, we will implement the a goal project in collaboration with NSDC, mm -hmm. which is geared towards um, providing or improving the skills of young farmers in agro-processing and, and crop production. Um, and we're also looking at the, the possibility of constructing an agro-processing lab at the NSDC farms in Mikud, that's in Monrepo, Mikud. Mm -hmm. um, we are also working um, with the Cultural Development Foundation to do some training for, um, we call it the ads business training mm -hmm. in collaboration with Sir Afalis Community College and the Cultural Development Foundation, um, whereby post, um, artisans, creatives, uh, musicians, mm -hmm. and musicians will be trained um, in uh, um, business, uh, in, in marketing their business, in, in production, etc. So th this will be done um, under the BNTF cycle, and we will also construct a perform multi-purpose um, performance stage at the Cultural Development Foundation grounds. Okay. Which well, is, and this one is... is when are we looking for that one? Because I know a lot of our artisans will be jumping for joy when they hear that. Yes, so this, w this will be implemented, this will be constructed this year. Mm -hmm. We are currently working with our engineers, our consul consulting engineers, to develop the... the designs mm -hmm. and also um, prepare the estimates for, for this particular project. Um, the idea is um, for there to be a performance stage, um, it's an open area, open, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that um, persons, instead of um, conducting performances in the cultural center, they can perform, they can perform open on air. the outside open air. Um, you will have a nice seating arrangement. Mm -hmm stage canopy um, with changing rooms as well. Okay. Will that um, be an end to the cultural center as we know it, or it will be an added complement? An added complement to the cultural the center. It will just provide for, for more, uh, more of an open air kind of setting mm -hmm. compared to, you know, the close up yeah, would type we have setting at the cultural center. Have the backdrop? Yes, <laughs> and overlooking the, the, the Castries Harbor oh, and so on. Okay. So, um, like I said, we're working on the designs and, and so on. Um, but we, we, the objective is to ensure that um, the musicians, mm -hmm. the, the artists, and so on, they have a place to, you know, to, to perform and, 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 um, and perhaps make some money as well. So, so that's important because the livelihoods component of the education and human resource development sector is um, is geared towards improving lives through economic activity, uh, that, that type of thing. Okay. I recently um, read that uh, an agreement. We, without without the, cutting, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Without cutting a short, Scotty. Um, and the, the, the last one is the 
music studio. I think you might be interested hold, hold in this that, Hold that thought. Let's take a break, because uh, that one might be a little bit lengthy <laughs> if we're going to be chatting about the music studio. This is Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. We'll be back in a few. I'm so fed up with my 13-year-old child. She's driving me crazy. I just don't know what to do. All that child need is some good licks to wake up. Alice, ignore the counseling Pansy's giving. Government employees have free access to professional counseling services under the Employee Assistance Program, known as EAP. EAP? EAP? What's that? Uh, not me that telling people my business. Listen to me, Alice. I was struggling with my child. I made an appointment to see an EAP counselor, and I was very satisfied with the service that I received. And you know what? Up to a day like today, my information remains confidential. Cox, how come nobody in the office knew anything about your counseling? Ah, that's because EAP counselors, they work on the strict clauses of confidentiality. I know you know what confidential means. Eh, uh -uh. EAP providing professional counseling services? How much is it? Girl, the counseling is free. Free for you free for your child. And you know what? Your information remains confidential. Call the EAP unit at the Ministry of the Public Service. Telephone number 468-2269 for more information. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. My guest with me is Mr. Brandon Antoine, the Deputy Project Manager from the Solution Social Development Fund. This, this afternoon, we're chatting about the uh, Basic Needs Trust Fund, and we have learned quite a bit on um, the projects that have been undertaken by um, your committee. But you mentioned something before we went into the break that will pique the interest of many young St. Lucians listening and watching this show, and that is the construction of a music studio or a recording studio. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. So under the BNTF 7 and 8 cycle, and I know that will interest you, Scotty. Mm -hmm. This is your, this is your field, 40. your background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so under the BNTF 7 and 8 cycle, mm -hmm. um, we did, we provided um, training to about 50 young musicians um, in collaboration with the St. Lucia School of Music. So they received training in sound engineering and, and so forth. Mm. Um, and under the BNTF 9 cycle, we constructed the, the studio, the music studio at the Grozilly Human Resource Development Center. Mm -hmm. um, so under the BNTF 10 cycle, we will um, complete the studio because we, we also purchase equipment, okay. the music equipment, mm -hmm. on the, the BNTF um, 7 and 8 cycle. Um, and also the BNTF 9 cycle. So mm -hmm. under the BNTF 10, we will complete the studio. They do the, the installation of the equipment, um, looking at the, the acoustics, mm -hmm. um, and we are working in collab collaboration with the Cultural Development Foundation. They are spearheading this effort. Excellent. Um, and also the Grosley Town Council, who is you know, responsible for the, the Grosley Human Resource Development Center. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, a collaborative um, approach that we are embarking on. Um, and the, the objective is to provide the space for musicians. Um, we are particularly targeting um, those musicians that are, you know, who are, um, I wouldn't say poor, but you know, th they don't have the means yeah, to, the means to, to pay to you pay a thousand five hundred, two thousand five hundred. Yes, for recordings. Right. Um, so we are targeting those persons. Um, they will pay a nominal fee mm -hmm. to the Cultural Development Foundation because I'm, I'm sure you will appreciate the maintenance and, and yeah, as and if when you go to a basketball or a football field, you pay a small fee for the lights and whatnot. You yes. might be able to do the same for the studio. Yes, understood. Yes. Understood. Um, will that studio be available to every single solution or just the community of Grozilly? Um, we 
Generally, same, everybody. Same, yeah, yeah, everybody. Excellent. Um, I mean, it's in the community of Grizzly, mm -hmm. but we, are, you know, we're hoping that persons would come over, would come over and do their recording. Economic development yeah. as well, there. Yes. All right. Excellent. Um, the BNTS collaboration with WASCO, let's talk about that a little bit. You recently signed an agreement mm -hmm. and uh, to install that $10,000 water tank in Grosely. Now, we all say that water is life, but apart from Victoria Schulzel, are you expecting to see any other communities benefit from projects like that? Um, currently, currently mm -hmm. under the BNTF 10 cycle, we only have one water project. Okay. Um, but going forward, you know, under the BNTF 11 cycle, we expect to receive um, proposals mm -hmm. for um, for various water projects. In fact, under the BNT, we have a pipeline of projects that under uh, under the, the BNTF 10 program mm -hmm. that you know we couldn't because of the the funding that we we receive, mm -hmm. um, we couldn't um, you know be we, we were not able to provide funds to all communities or, or, or to, to implement all projects, right? All so right. hence the reason why we have to prioritize. Um, because the, the funding we receive is, is a grant from the Caribbean Development Bank mm -hmm. um, and also the government of St. Lucia contributes to that. So it's 95% from the funding from the Caribbean Development Bank for a grant mm -hmm. and 5% um, normally through government contribution. Are we expecting any other communities to be targeted? Do you have any names you can tell us? Um, for water? Mm -hmm. um, or any other project you're looking at? Yeah, well, under the BNTF 10 cycle, we are under the BNTF 11 cycle, in mm -hmm. fact, we are already receiving um, proposals and requests for various projects. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't want to go into them now mm -hmm. because um, we would have to do the analysis and, and have the stakeholder discussions to, you know, to ensure that at the end of, at the, end of the day, mm -hmm. we have a pipeline of projects um, that you know, we will implement. We have the, the, the necessary, um, the required funding to implement those projects. So um, moving forward, the BNTF program, like I said, is a flagship program for the St. Lucia Social Development Fund and also for the Caribbean Development Bank since 1979. Mm -hmm. um, this year, um, for the nine borrowing member countries, the BNTF, the Basic Needs Trust Fund, will implement, I think, f 40 million US worth of projects mm -hmm. across those nine borrowing member countries. Um, so we are, St. Lucia receive um, 13 million out of that uh, 14 million EC out of that, that purse. Right. Um, so we have to ensure that, you know, when we, when, when we develop the sector portfolio, that the projects that are, that we are, that are being finalized mm -hmm. are projects that, first of all, will improve the lives of persons, reduce poverty, mm -hmm. um, and help um, the socioeconomic conditions mm -hmm. of our people. And it must be feasible. Yeah, it must be feasible. Mm -hmm. Um, and here's the reason we have, a, we have our technical team, mm -hmm. we have our social analysts um, and our project officers, they will, together with the, the other staff, will do the various analysis yeah, to right. ensure that we are targeting those communities um, and when we do the evaluation of the, the, the projects, mm -hmm. we can determine that, yeah, we made an impact yeah, yeah. and here, here are the results of, of of the interventions that we made, and we can see an improvement in the lives of persons. Excellent. Well, Mr. Antoine, let me say a big thank you for joining us on Issues and Answers today. I am sure that with all the projects that will be implemented, we will see an alleviation of uh, poverty in various communities around St. Lucia. This has been Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I've been your host, Kennedy Eugene. Thanks for joining.